hey guys welcome back to another episode so into the last episode we have left off here we just saved the data into our um, wordpress database and we are able to show the data with the php but today we will be uh, we will we should able to show the data with uh, with our vuex right so let's hit refresh and go back into our code editor okay so at first let's remove those things we do not need that way so now uh, let's go into the action.js and we need to uh, create another action for that let's name it uh, fetch settings like this and this will also accept a commit and the payload okay so we need that url as well which is actually the same because we are just sending this time the get request so we need to use this uh, return promise again so we can say return new promise like this and this will again take two parameters resolve and reject okay so now we can send our exius get request and we just need to pass the url here and then if the response come then we can uh, resolve it so we can say return resolve resolve and actually we need to pass a commit here because after getting this fetch settings data we will update our existing state from where with the uh, 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 from where with the getter we will get those values so uh, for that let's commit and we we haven't created it but we will create in a moment so we can say uh, up state settings i guess yeah and with that we need to pass the payload as as well so we can say response response dot data like so and if there is any error obviously we can reject that so reject error like so so now we need to create that uh, 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 mutation so let's open our mutation.js and here let's copy that from the action update settings and this will accept two parameters obviously the state and uh, the payload that we have sent off now this will just uh, update the settings uh, states so we can say state dot settings dot general remember we have uh, into the state we have state settings general so we need to update this portion so equal to we can say just payload like so so that's done from the vx part we have created the action get the values with the promise and if the promise comes with a result we are resolving it with a commit which is uh, which is update settings that means we need to create a mutation that we have created through this we are just updating our uh, state with this payload now it's time to go to general tab dot view and here we will be creating a method we can name it like fetch settings and then we'll be saying this dot uh, fetch settings i guess but uh, for that we need actually to load this down here so the action is fetch settings and we can say like fetch settings like so now then we need to actually hook this function 
in some some way so that when we refresh the page we get these actions triggered okay so for that we need to use a lifecycle hook that view uses we can use this for this we can use mounted okay so and here we can say this dot fetch settings like so and uh, this should be good enough for us to go get those values on the page refresh so let's check that out now if we go back into the backend and just let's reload it if there is no error it should come but if there is error then we need to change. yes our value has appeared as you can see so these values are coming through the uh, uh, get request that our scripts is triggering when so let's recap so uh, when we are refreshing this page is when the mounted hook is triggered so we are calling this fetch settings right so what is happening on that fetch settings is we are triggering an action which is fetch settings again so this fetch settings having some code so this is the url where we are uh, in, in the return promise we are sending get request through the ajax and when uh, when we getting the response we actually updating update settings we are committing this through the mutation which is actually updating the states these values now then uh, in the general tab so we are getting those values into this mounted properties mounted hoops now one thing to remember you can have a question that because we are using this computer then why you can just return it from this from data yes we are returning this form data but in um, for this kind of situation when you need to update the data and get the data in in, in, in the same time so at that time we uh, we need to use this computed property in uh, uh, of getter and setter method so in that case we do not need to use the setter method for this computed we just need to use the getter method to get the value instantly so that is why we have using this get method to uh, get the uh, values from the uh, state now obviously when we click on the uh, save settings uh, it seems nothing is happening right so if we uh, click uh, write this alex okay and if we click on save settings so it is saving everything data is saved as you can see this is updated but uh, there is uh, no motion available so user can really understand yes data is saved so obviously if we reload he will be confirmed that yes my data is saved like this but we need some kind of a thing uh, to un uh, to user let the user know yes my data is saved okay so for that what we can actually do let's go back to the code editor let's go into the actions and in here we can do two things before the uh, ajax request we can commit something let's commit and let's name it savings like this so that means before the ajax request we are committing something that will trigger some kind of a message that it is saving and when the response comes uh, we rather than data saved into the console we can trigger another commit and we can say saved now obviously we need to create those things so let's go back to our um, uh, mutations but before that we need to go to our index.js to set another state under the state we can say uh, let's say loading text like so and here let's put our button text that we have written you can say save settings so uh, that means we need to change our uh, general tab these save settings static value into some sort of dynamic value so again we can use these computed properties like loading text and then pass the get method we can return this from this 
dot obviously we need to have some sort of getters again so we can say get uh, loading text like so so let's add it here and we need to create those uh, getters obviously so let's go into our getters there it is and here we will be um, creating our getters this get loading text and this will take this state and from there he's just return this state dot loading text like so all right so in general tab now we can say this loading text all right like this we do not uh, need to pass that as hard coded so we can just say loading text from here so this will get the value from the computed property now obviously from actions when we submit we need to create this savings and saved mutation so let's go there and start creating so for the uh, savings we can take the state Okay, we need to add a comma here and what we can do we can just update the state so uh, loading text equal to let's say saving okay and for the save again we can take the state state and we can say state dot loading text equal to uh, again save settings so when it is saved so we are coming back into the previous format like so so what uh, what happened is just a recap uh, into the general tab we remove this hard coded thing from here we added a uh, another property into this state that is loading text which is having the save settings text and from there we have created a getter get loading text which is returning the state loading text and we have included this into our general tab through this computed property with a get with a getter and then when we triggering this save settings before the post request we are calling this save uh, savings commit which is a mutation of course what it is doing it is updating the state with this savings text and when the response is coming back we are resolving with another commit which is saved so that is is also in the mutation and which is what is doing what this is doing is again it is coming back to the previous text which is save settings so let's check that out in our code now just hit a refresh if there is no error then we are good yes i think there is no error so now again go back to the john now if we click on save settings this text should be changed for a couple of seconds uh, for a time being that it updates so for that period of time it will say saving dot 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 and when the save completes we can come back into the save setting so let's click on that and it is saying okay so unknown mutation type so we need to fix that out let's go back to our editor and this is savings so, okay so we need to change this not savings but saving okay so let's try that again hit a reload okay so now if we click on that it is saying savings and when the, it's done it is saying save settings so it's kind of a tiny thing but it gives the user 
uh, a feedback that okay it is started saving and it's saved complete and it's uh, coming back into the save format again so just again we can check alex to let's say alex and save settings saving and save settings so the value is saved now if we hit refresh we should see the updated value as well yes so guys i hope you have enjoyed this total series so it's it's just uh, I, I have tried to show you how, what is the possibilities by using vue.js into the wordpress and in terms of developing plugin or themes or any other component you want to build so i have just tried to show you the possibilities obviously you can make it much much better in your own way by using your own thought process but uh, this is this you can take as a as as i have mentioned it and this is a uh, wp view kickoff so this is just a kickoff point from here you can go so much further so uh, one improvement that i can do into this project as well uh, in terms of this uh, this thing savings and save settings so we can add a notification library there is so much notification library available so hopefully i will create another video after that if if possible then uh, we, we i will create that to add a notification library so that there is there will be a nice visible notification when everything is goes well or any other error comes then it will show some error notifications so this is a kind of a user perspective way but in terms of um, a technical way you can improve a lot of things here i hope you will do so this is the conclusion of this series so uh, uh, let's let's see in the new some some new exciting tutorials so see you in the next tutorial series bye bye